Hi folks, we've been revitalizing a bunch of fixtures for production here at Saunders Machine Works, especially on our Akuma Horizontal and our Haas VF2 YT. And I found a workflow I like for how we handle the patterning in Fusion that I think really helps uh, give you a lot of flexibility, control, sort of design intent behind the fixture and the coordinate systems. And it solved some problems that we've had. And I wanted to share that with you guys right now. So what this started with was our ModVice steel top jaw. And we machine these eight at a time, and I programmed one of them like so, and then it is patterned with a duplication pattern across these eight instances. And what started this journey a few months ago, trying to figure out a better way to do this was, I don't love some of the upstream and downstream problems that things like uh, drive models, solid models, joints can cause. It can just be really frustrating with some severe consequences. I wanted a better way to position the part exactly where I wanted it, but also to know where it is and why it's right there. And these parts are a great example because these are made out of 4140, and long story short, most 4140 is saw cut out of plate. There's far fewer uh, bar forms or rolled forms than there are sort of like mild steels. And what happens is we end up with ver some variances, uh, we order these about a thousand at a time, on the dimensions of the saw cut. And I want that part centered so that uh, we don't risk having a tool imbalance where it either doesn't cut or cuts too much on one side and not the other. So we end up sorting them, whether this is the best practice or not, I'm not here to defend, but inevitably there is some variation. And so we sort them and we'll run them in batches of three or 400. And then if we need to make a minor adjustment to the mod vise, no big deal. But when you make that adjustment to the vise, you end up shifting the part down. And that's what made me rethink, how can I better handle this? And the solution is a single sketch that drives the instances of that pattern. So I hop back into the design space under my tombstone. You can see the fixture plate there that I normally leave hidden. Under sketches, I have a WCS location sketch made by JWS. So first off, I like the fact that I can name the sketch, makes it easier to find and describes what I'm doing. And if I toggle the visibility on, you can see I've got the instances here with those dots representing the point I'm going to use for the pattern. Even better, kind of a bonus, you can use this sketch to store notes to yourself that pop up if you're trying to remember uh, some peculiarities of that fixture. Um, but the meat of this lesson is, is really quite simple. I have my one position, this top left one, and then from there, I've anchored or sketched these distances relative to each other. So if we need to update the position of one of these parts by 10 thou, I know exactly where to do it in one sketch with full confidence that that's going to flow through to the cam. When we come back into the cam workspace, the way this pattern is handled, uh, we hop in and out of the pattern. So the first thing is not a pattern. It's a single roughing operation where I've programmed it with sketch traces to rough uh, two, one and two, then three and four, five, six, seven, eight. So it roughs all eight of them with a single flow. Then we hop into the pattern and it's going to start doing all the work. That pattern is driven by the source point, which is a single, uh, it says edge, it's really that point. And then the targets are these other seven points. So the other wonderful thing about this, which has been helpful is if for whatever reason, something happens and part number three is, is a bad piece of material or has a broken piece of carbide in it and you wanna run the rest of these, but not that instance, all that I have to do, turn on that sketch, hold the control key and select the one that I wanna skip for this next current run. The other problem this solved for us was we're running out of offsets on our horizontal. Uh, there's eight parts here, we have 200 offsets. Sounds like you have a lot, but we have about 24 different fixtures on that horizontal, some of them which run over eight parts. So you can't establish a WCS for each part, which would be another way to solve this problem. Plus coordinate systems kind of stink. It's hard. it's not possible in most controls, at least Fanuc and Akuma controls, to label what coordinate system goes for what. There's severe consequences if you get it wrong. Uh, and I just don't wanna have eight coordinate systems for parts like this. And you don't need to, especially here because it's all op one parts. So there's a fair amount of extra stock. Um, so using one coordinate system, way simpler. And it also stops us from probing because when we first got our first Haas, uh, probing is awesome. It's the coolest thing in the world. We still do it a ton and there's times to do it. But there's also a lot to be said for fixtures that are designed such that you don't have to probe. Another example is our hobby mod vices. We're setting up this VF2 fixture plate. We have a single part programmed and it's the same thing, a duplication pattern where I program the part once and then it duplicates it across this pattern. Easy to turn off one or more instances if I need to skip one for some reason. 
And if we come back and look at the fixture itself, I have a sketch here, Gen 2 quarter inch fixed spacing. And that sketch right now has the 5.6 inch spacing along the X axis. And then this will get patterned in Y. Uh, actually, I haven't done that yet. We'll do that right now. It's quite simple. Now, this is an op one fixture uh, out of aluminum extrusion. There's plenty of extra socks. So the, this is not as important here. In other words, I don't anticipate ever having to adjust these dimensions, but the, there'll be an op two fixture behind it. And that op two fixture will be such that let's say, for example, I need to trim castle grip inserts and we end up moving that plane back 10 thou and I want to shift the part over. And now it's easy to do that. So if I wanted to add that duplication pattern, the instances here, I'll just actually turn off the fixture to make it a little bit easier to see. Four, five, or set five, six, seven, eight. Now you'll notice I don't even have the solid body uh, pattern across this instance. On an op one fixture like this, I don't necessarily need it, but that's the other nice thing about this is if I wanted to create a solid body pattern, I could do it and use that same sketch and then I'll get the visual simulation to check the, sim uh, the cam simulation against where those parts will be. I wanna create that pattern of all of the CAD components. I'll make sure I'm in the design workspace. I'll pick that component, right click, and I'll choose move, copy. Let me know in the comments below. There's probably a few other ways you could do this. Uh, I'll turn that sketch back on though, and I'll do point to point and create a copy. And then all I need to do is pick the origin point of here, target point there, click okay. And you would do that across um, all the instances. It takes a few minutes for the setup, but in my opinion, well worth it for, especially here where we're setting up a long-term production fixture. Lastly, similar concept, but slightly different benefits I wanted to show is this is our OP2 uh, castle grip fixture. And so this is a unique fixture because uh, these are, these OP2s come in as a OP1 stripped. So these are actually tw 12, so four, four and four. So they're vertically connected still by a strip, but we made them out of three separate fixtures. And that's because these are hardened A2. It's just way easier to machine and heat treat smaller fixtures. Uh, and it gives us the ability if we need to remake just one of them um, to do so. When we set them up and secure them into the tombstone, it's not that difficult to use, actually we use 3D printed spacers um, to ensure that they're perfectly aligned, but they may not be perfectly aligned. And most importantly, the way we're holding these with a single uniforce clamp is that over time, even in the hardened A2, there's a chance that the fixture is, is still able to be used, but we need to hard mill this face and that face just to clean it up to take say 5,000th of an inch off it. What happens when we do that is it's pushing this to the left and this to the right. It's spacing them out further. So by having a sketch that sets the instance location of all of these, it lets me easily shift either all four over at a time, or it lets me shift the bottom four relative to the middle four, full control, no hassle, no stress. Again, all that control on the design side of Fusion with a single work coordinate system over at the machine. By the way, IMTS is in a few weeks, 2024. For those that are gonna be there, I'm gonna be doing the Autodesk Cam Slam Challenge Wednesday at 1 p.m. And then two hours later, there's gonna be an Insta Machinist meetup at the Kern booth uh, with Dylan from Within Tolerance. Our Johnny Five is also going to be in the Kern booth. So looking forward to seeing everybody at IMTS. Otherwise, take care. See you soon.